Sorry for the delay. Um, we had a very well-timed fire alarm just before we're about to go online. So thank you to those of you who have um, waited patiently. Um, so to begin, um, my name is Eleanor Marshall and I'm the Transport Infrastructure Lead at Innovate UK KTN. So um, I have a background in industrial design and transport architecture, and I've previously worked for various city transport authorities in the UK and abroad. Um, however, my current role at Innovate UK KTN is at the other side of the table um, as part of the public sector. So transport infrastructure, um, when I say that, I mean that it covers all modes, so within um, Innovate UK KTN, I sit in a transport team that has experts from uh, these modes. So we have rail experts, maritime experts, digital transport, zero emission vehicles and automation as well. So today um, we're going to look at some projects that um, Innovate UK KTN have been working on across transport infrastructure. So all of these um, projects have been funded by the UK government, um, so centrally, and we um, have been facilitating them um, in partnership with uh, Innovate UK. So um, I'll be showing you some sort of project highlights from these uh, different funds, um, but please feel free to research um, the projects in their whole, as there's lots and lots of interesting um, projects were funded and way too many to cover in this uh, session today. So this webinar is part of a Decarbonising Transport Week. So it's a week of online webinars um, with insight from people and organisations involved in all aspects of decarbonising transport. So there's a website you can go to, to find out more of the uh, sister events to this one at Decarbonising Transport. Portweek.com. So to give an introduction to uh, Innovate UK KTN, um, it exists to connect innovators with new partners and new opportunities. Um, so accelerating ambitious innovation ideas into real world um, solutions. So we connect all sectors together from SMEs to large organizations, from academia to the public and private sectors. Um, we essentially connect for positive change, uh, accelerating innovation in the UK, but also internationally um, as well. So in addition to transport, um, we cover a diverse strata of different areas across many different um, industries. So you can see a list of them there. And of course, Lots of them are very much related to transport as well. So we don't just work in these silos of our industries. Um, transport, for example, works very, very closely with um, energy and digital and design. So um, our team is across the UK um, because we uh, work with um, all different types of funding, but um, predominantly central government funding in the transport team. So um, we uh, are sort of represented all over the UK. And we also have um, some colleagues in Africa as well. So international organization. And this is sort of the five pillars of what we do at Innovate UK KTN. So we um, help with businesses and organizations to connect with others. Um, we offer funding advice, we uh, influence within our sector, we support businesses for innovation, and um, yes, we can also uh, offer advice as well. Um, so uh, this is our first um, project that I'm going to talk about today. So um, we recently launched the Hydrogen Supply Chain Directory. So you can find it on our website. So this directory shares the details of collaborative organizations that are currently using or producing hydrogen or are proactively planning to. 
So there is, of course, a big transport element in the use of hydrogen. Um, we have around 180, I think, people in the directory now. So um, as you can see by the map, it gives quite a good a geographical spread of hydrogen use in the UK. So it showcases solutions providers in the supply chain who can potentially help uh, end users meet their hydrogen targets. Um, so we have broken the supply chain down into six elements, uh, production, conversion, storage, distribution, utilisation and support services. Um, and the UK has strong representation from all of these parts of the, uh, the supply chain. And um, it, this, the UK's hydrogen strategy outlines both the foundations for a low carbon economy, as well as the innovation support required to stimulate investment and create a strong hydrogen sector in the UK. So this directory has been very much made in mind with um, encouraging people to connect for hydrogen innovation across the UK. So now, if it works, I'll show you a little video um, which describes how, uh, how to use the directory, basically. So welcome to the launch of Innovate UK KTN's Hydrogen Supply Chain Directory. So today I will be talking you through the direct directory and how to use it. So this directory shares the details of end users who are currently either using or producing hydrogen or are proactively planning to. It also showcases solutions providers who may be able to help these end users meet their hydrogen targets. Innovate UK KTN can facilitate introductions for users of this directory to organisations or individuals which are listed here. So to give a bit of background to the directory, we have over 100 organisations which have signed up across um, all regions of the UK. We have broken down the supply chain into six elements. So they are production, conversion, storage, movement, utilisation and support services. So to move on um, and to look at the directory itself, it has been divided into two categorisation areas. So first of all, we have geographical, so we have a map view, and then we have arranged each organisation by industry, so what sector they come from. So if I was to um, have a look for example, hydrogen support services, then I would go to this area of the supply chain. So we have our six categories here. And then within hydrogen support services, there are further categorizations. So we have consultancy, asset management, electronics, investment, software, management systems, and telecommunications. As you can see, each of the sections for our supply chain have been uh, categorised into various subsectors within their um, sections. So, for example, I am looking to find a hydrogen support service consultancy. So, what I would do is I would click on area that I wanted to have a closer look at. And as you can see, if you ho hover over each of the areas, it gives you an overview of um, the numbers in the directory. So for this particular section, we've got 35 organisations who identified themselves as consultancies within hydrogen support services. So as you can see, this has filtered down our map as well. 
so we can see exactly where in the UK these consultancies are and also um, what type of industry they are a part of. And if you go into the map view, you can hover over each of the dots and then it will tell you a bit more information about the organisation and also gives you a link to their website. You can see as well that we have categorised um, each of the organisations using little icons, which makes it easy at a glance to uh, find using location and what type of organisation you're looking for to quickly locate exactly who you're looking for in the directory. Okay, so I'm getting some feedback that this is uh, not this is too small to read um so yes i think i'll just take over and talk about it then um so uh yeah basically as the video was saying um it's a tool to connect you with people um from different stages of the hydrogen supply chain and um we facilitate this by making personal introductions between people um, who are either registered with directory or fill out a form to request these introductions. So yeah, if you're interested in any part of hydrogen use in the UK and you want to find out who the main players are um, within this industry, then please uh, check out this, this uh, map tool. Um, so next, I'm going to talk about uh, VTX or vehicle to everything. So VTX uh, has developed from V to G, so vehicle to grid projects, and X represents everything. So it's essentially the use of uh, bidirectional chargers um, to connect to a building or the grids. Um, and uh, it's a way to uh, use energy uh, flexibly with the EV technology. So as part of the transition to net zero, the government has committed to phasing out the sale of new petrol and diesel cars and vans by 2030. So this is um, predicting that, uh, that ban. So, the programme that's currently being run by, um, well, it's now the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero. This slide is slightly out of date. It used to be called the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. It's currently running a VTX innovation programme, which aims to address um, the barriers um, enabling this energy flexibility that's possible from this bidirectional vehicle charging. Um, so this programme is part of the Flexibility Innovation Programme, which sits within the uh, 1 billion net zero innovation portfolio. So um, there is currently, so there's currently a phase one and anticipated phase two of this project. So in phase one, 17 R&D projects were awarded uh, 3.2 million. So Innovate UK KTN facilitated this. Um, and then there is a forthcoming phase where there will be um, demonstration projects. So that is currently um, underway. You can check out our webinar on uh, the anticipated phase two on uh, Innovate UK KTN's website. Um, it's called VTX phase two. Um, next, so got uh another video which is mostly images so there's not not nothing to read so hopefully that should be okay on the screen for everyone so um this is the next mode which is maritime so we've looked at sort of vehicles um so the clean maritime demonstration competitions um are part of the uh, department of transport's remit so in round one um, I'm going to uh, spotlight a £2.8 million project to develop an offshore charging solution, which can be um, deployed at the base of wind turbines to charge vessels. So I'll show you a sort of fun video demonstrating this tech because it will explain it a lot better than I can.
that is the kind of things that um, are being funded in the clean maritime um, space by the Department for Transport. So, um, next, next um, I'm going to spotlight some aviation infrastructure and um, work that we have been, uh, projects that we've been working on. So, um, we're part of the uh, Jet Zero Council, which is a partnership between industry and government to bring together um, ministers and chief, chief executive officer level stakeholders with the aim of um, delivering at least 10% um, sustainable aviation fuel or SAF in the UK fuel mix by 2030 and a zero emission transatlantic flight within um, a generation driving the ambitious delivery of new technologies uh, to cut aviation emis emissions. Um, so this will focus on developing UK capabilities um, to deliver both net zero and zero emission technologies in aviation. Um, so um, it's, it's about also developing a coordinated approach to the policy and regulatory framework to deliver net zero aviation by 2050 because it is an extremely highly regulated industry. Um, so then the picture, which is on the screen now, is of the um, uh, SAIT 2, so Sustainable Aviation Test and Environment Project from the Future Flight Challenge um, funding. So this was funded by UKRI and um, it brings together a consortium of partners, including Highlands and Islands, airports, Logan Air, Zero Avia, the Connected Places Catapult, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, and the Highlands and Islands Transport Partnership. Um, so it's based in the Orkney Islands, and it's the first, uh, UK's first low carbon aviation test centre um, embedded in an active commercial airport. So it builds on the recent successes demonstrating the first hybrid electric flights in Scotland and the use of um, electric autonomous drones for mail delivery within the Orkney Islands. So this project is now expanding to create a UK centre of excellence for sustainable region, regional aviation systems, enabling demonstrations of hydrogen powered regional flight, electric drone deliveries as well. And the use of these drones is being tested on things such as NHS remote deliveries um, in these rural com communities. And 45 jobs have been created so far through, through this um, aviation innovation project. So on to the next um, mode of transport, rail. So um, these uh, projects are funded by the Department for Trans for transport in, a, in association with Innovate UK and us. And um, the first project I was going to talk about, um, so both of them are about basically energy transition. And this one is a project uh, called Steamology. So it's hydrogen based technology to decarbonize the railway using a compact energy dense steam generator that drives a turbine to generate electricity. So this provides uh, zero emission hydrogen power for Viva Rail Class 230 rolling stock. Um, so this is in the sort of R&D phases and it's uh, in the nine month programme, um, they developed a 100 kilowatt range extender um, for a demonstrator. Um, so, uh, this project, uh, the sort of ambitions for it is to uh, retraction ex London underground district line trains um, for demonstration. Uh, and it's uh, this sort of, in, they're investigating at the moment the next steps to how to install this on these um, retrofitted trains um, to 
uh, introduce hydrogen technology to um, the UK's train system. Um, another um, project which also is looking at hydrogen on the UK rail network is um, Hydroflex mainline testing. So the lead partner for this is Birmingham Centre for Railway Research and Education. Um, and the project uh, actually undertook the first UK mainline operational testing of a train equipped with a hydrogen fuel cell. So um, it's basically uh, trialling at the moment to collect uh, evidence and information on this uh, innovative technology for a rail system. So the reason why hydrogen um, can be used in addition to electricity in the UK's rail system is that it's a good alternative when um, ele electricity is a more difficult solution to use. Um, so it can be used sort of not as a replacement technology, but more as something that can be used as an alternative option. Um, so maybe reasons of um, perhaps cost could be a driving force to select hydrogen over electrification um, in a sort of case-to-case -case basis. So that is some of the real innovation that um, we have been involved in with the Department for Transport. Um, and then next, uh, the next mode of transport is, well, it's bus, but it's particularly a, a autonomous bus. So um, self-driving um, capacity. So this project is uh, Calforth 2. So it's um, funded by the Government Centre for Connected and Autonomous Vehicles. And um, this project is a partnership between Stagecoach, Alexander Dennis, Edinburgh Napier University and the University of the West of England. So this project will see Stagecoach, the biggest bus operator in the UK, um, extend a 40 mile route from Edinburgh Park station across the Forth Road Bridge uh, in Scotland. So it's uh, poised to be launched to the public soon after it, it goes through extensive testing. So it will go to Dunfermline in city centre. So um, the buses will be staffed by uh, specially trained professionals, so it's not like an unstaffed bus uh, in any way. Um, and uh, it's the the sort of the person on the bus is like uh, monitors the safety and sort of um, is there to uh, reassure the passengers and answer any questions they may have. So it's very much an uh, innovative technology that will be zooming around our towns and cities in the UK very, very soon. So yeah, just final slide, which is, I'm just gonna cover basically um, how, how all these projects got access to this funding in the first place. So transport infrastructure doesn't just usually um, work with the same central government departments. We work across um, lots of them, so um, the DFT, um, the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero, so formerly Business Energy Industrial Strategy, um, DEFRA, Department for Environmental Rural Affairs, um, and beyond. Um, so, and that's just the sort of central government pots. Um, we also work with uh, other funding. Um, so regionally, um, sub-regionally, um, and uh, locally as well. So Innovate UK KTN can help you sort of navigate this complicated space and work with you for very exciting and um, innovative projects uh, in the UK. Um, I think that's about it. Um, if there's any, any questions that you might have, I can see people have been introducing themselves in the chat, which is really, really good. Uh, we'd like to encourage this. Um, so if anyone else wants to do that, then that'd be a good idea. Okay, so I have one from Julian Worth. Um, real electrification is a fully proven way of decarbonizing freight and passenger transport, but it's currently too expensive. Would it not be a better use of funding to encourage SMEs, etc., to find innovative ways of reducing electrification costs? Um, yes. So um, as I was saying, like the 
there is uh, there is sort of uh, funding and initiative to reduce the costs of electrification. Um, that is sort of one of the reasons why uh, hydrogen was identified as a potential alternative because of the cost. And I would say that this is a very, it's like a, I've just cherry picked a lot of different projects that we've been working on in the last couple of months. So it's not a representative of where all the money is going um, at all. So um, yes, there is lots of work that's been done to try and reduce costs and innovate and sort of bring real um, in line with other transport modes, um, which traditionally have been innovating slightly faster. So I hope that does answer your question, that yes, there is definitely work going on in that area. No, any other open questions? Oh, one from uh, Ben Peace. We may need more innovation to drive more walking, cycling, more use of public transport, behaviour change stuff. What's going on in this space? Okay, um, yes, yeah, so uh, definitely. Um, uh, I mean, there is the government's uh, new agency for active travel that's just opened um, under the DFT. So that was, um, I believe that opened uh, early this year. So um, yeah, there's even been new departments created to uh, encourage active travel. And of course, when you're talking about transport infrastructure, you're not just talking about stuff that moves or stuff that helps stuff to move. You're talking about the public realm as well. You're talking about architecture. You're talking about everything in the built environment. So I haven't really highlighted any projects um, surrounding active travel today, but I do believe personally as well that it is the um, one of the sort of the most important in the hierarchy of transport in terms of um, quick wind decarbonisation. I mean, personally, um, I can't drive, so <laughs> um, yeah, I I really think that it's uh, incredibly important. Um, and yeah, check out um, active travel. Um, uh, government department under the DFT. They've done a lot of good work in this area. So from Green Warnell, um, across all the EV charging infrastructure investment in the UK, there is no provision for fire suppression or environmental fire water pollution management. Whilst we decarbonise our energy, we are creating the next pollution problem. I see no government or environment agency concern regarding this. Is Innovate UK looking at this? Um, to be honest, I am not sure. Um, we do work extremely closely with local authorities and a lot of the uh, EV charging infrastructure management falls either completely under the remit or jointly under whoever the charge point operator is. Um, I mean, I would have to go away and look it up to see if there is any um, work being done in this area. I do know, however, that the British Standard Institute has recently started publishing standards around EV charging infrastructure um, installation. Um, so I think we're the first in Europe to publish um, sort of accessibility regulations around the charging. So I would imagine that potentially that's something that either the BSI are working on or they're aware of. Um, so I hope that does answer your question. Maybe it's one for us to link up with the BSI and see what they're, what they're doing about it. Oh, another one. So Freddie, Freddie Lewis. What do you think are the greatest challenges in implementing hydrogen fuel in the UK once the testing phases are complete? Um, I think in general, it's just the whole uh, idea of adopting a new, a new infrastructure at scale, essentially. So that's why when we did the supply chain directory, we didn't just focus on the end use. We focused on all parts of the supply chain from the beginning to end. 
because it rapidly becomes a sort of chicken and egg scenario if you sort of focus on delivering um, the you know the output before you've got the infrastructure in place. So I think the greatest challenge is rolling it out at scale evenly across all parts of the supply chain. Hope that answers your question. So, oh, one from Adrian Neve or Neve, sorry if I got that wrong. Have you been involved in research or in the use of hydrogen alternative fueling in the freight and logistics environment? Will that industry be the primary focus for investment and rollout for that infrastructure? Yes, we have been involved in the ZERFT um, competitions. So the zero emission road freight trials. Um, which are looking at the use of hydrogen, electricity, and um, in very, very big applications. So like heavy, heavy duty haulage. And yes, it is a, I mean, it is already a big uh, investment area. Um, the government is uh, been um, investing uh, in tr different trials across the UK. So it is a big and it is a big infrastructure focus, sort of the at scale stuff, uh, in addition to smaller vehicles. Thanks. Okay, so we've got we've got uh we'll just take a few more. Um so um, we've got Bagya Lakshmi, Lakshmi, sorry, um, uh, sorry about that. Um, what do you think that single occupancy car dependency is more, what gov should take measures to reduce so that we can control car emissions? Um, I think, um, basically, uh, when we're thinking about transport policy, we have to use the triangle hierarchy. So it's the, you've probably are all aware of it, it's a triangle with a hierarchy of carbon intensity per vehicle mode. And basically at the top, you've got aviation, then you've got single occupancy car use, and at the bottom, you've got walking and cycling. So I think that when we think about um, transport policy and how to make urban and rural areas work, we've got to take into account people's needs um, in addition to actually the carbon intensity when planning things and sort of balance those two, which is easier said than done. I hope that answers your question. Um, Ed Jordan, do you think the pace of development of the use of hydrogen for transport alongside application is significant to meet net zero targets? So um, basically the government is funding both technologies at the same time, because they believe that there will be, uh, to hit the targets, there needs to be a two track approach. We can't rely solely on one um, type of uh, energy. Um, uh, no comment on the, on the pace of development. <laughs> that answers your question. And well, on that note, if no one's got um, if no one's got any other um, any other questions, then um, thank you, thank you all for coming today. Apologies for the the delayed start. Um, perfect timing with uh, a fire alarm. Um, but yeah, if you've got um, if you've got any any further questions or you want to find out more about what Innovate your KKTN can do. Um, then uh, there's my contact details uh, at the bottom of the screen. Um, so yeah, thank you for um, thank you for attending um, today's session. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Thanks all. Thank you.